The Christian Association of Nigeria has rejected the company's Allied Matters Act 2020 because it will snuff out life uh, out of the church and rank the church as a secular institution among or under secular control. President Mohamed Buhari had on August 7th signed the uh, bill into law, the company's and Allied Matters 2020. The bill, which has been passed by the National Assembly, replaced the 1990 bill. The Christian body described as satanic sections of the law which empowers the supervising minister to suspend trustees of an association, in this case the church, and appoint the interim managers to manage the affairs of the association for some given time. The presiding bishop of the Living Faith Church Worldwide, David Oedipo, had also advised the federal government to expand the part of the law that gives the minister the power to remove the board of trustees of churches without recourse to the court. Can, in a statement signed on Thursday by Adebayo Ladeji, special, uh, special assistant on media and communications to Can President Sam, uh, Samson Ayokunle, noted that the federal government has declared war on the church if it moved on uh, to implement the law. And joining us is the founder and senior pastor of Foundation of Truth Assembly, Reverend Yomi Kasali. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, thank you for having me. Uh, quickly share with us why Khan is resisting this Kama Act. These laws have thank been you. there for at least the last 30 years, except, you know, a few amen amendments. I guess the part of the law that um, has um, ruffled our feathers uh, as can Christian Association of Nigeria is a part that um, gives the power to uh, remove trustees of these NGOs or churches um, once they found uh, some misconduct. You know, misconduct is a broad, is a term that has broad interpretation. People cannot understand um, what would constitute misconduct. Um, however, um, we found out that uh, Khan is not against transparency, neither is Khan against openness, um, but we just feel that if it's going to affect trustees being removed, um, of course, not arbitrarily, but through the court. I mean, it's very clear to us now that we, we, we have to go to court. We don't want powers to remove um, stakeholders in a church that we believe that uh, is uh, critical for society to move forward. So the, the, the power should not be given to those in government to remove and replace um, the trustees. All right. So, so some quarters would That's also. Position. Yeah, some quarters would also like to ask: um, Does the church, in particular, have anything to hide by refusing regulation or some of these provisions in the in the act? I, I would say no. The church, you know, the, the, we need to understand how can is um, um, how, how can exist. Can has five blocks. We use the word block to explain each um, each block. The, the block that seems to be the loudest is this PFN, CPFN. In other words, the Pentecostals, which I belong to, we are the loudest. We are vocal. We we are least structured in terms of having corporate governance. We're not against corporate governance. I am not against corporate governance. I've spoken to and with, um, of course, the Khan president, uh, because I had to take his uh, grandest interview. Um, so when I get corporate governance, however, we do also realize that some churches are poorly run, managed, and governed. And so if the government wants to indeed uh, help with respect to governance, and we have governance issues, we, we, would, we would appreciate if government can set up a joint committee uh, to help us we can and government with respect to how we can be better governed. Don't forget, we all have different exposures and different understanding of what our jobs should do, uh, how we should play our role. We are more spiritual, but maybe less uh, administratively sound. But the churches that probably will have things to hide will be churches that are least structured and not that who are not transparent, who are not open. Um, I, I don't think the church has anything to hide. Unfortunately, we breached some kind of trust that our citizens and our, our worshippers have in us. Because of the lifestyle that we've adopted, buoyant, extravagant lifestyle of certain church leaders. Church leaders are meant to be moral leaders. Moral leaders should not be living like uh, their yeah. politicians or their businessmen. Uh, we're not businessmen. A few of us have always chided and derided the way some of our leaders have lived. I can be prosperous and not be too loud. Some okay. of us think wealth shown and fronted. So that's where we have issues. And... Um, Regulation from the government with respect to governance is welcomed, but 
We do not want them to begin to, you know, think of with leadership of the church. Okay. Uh, which I, I, I definitely know will not be the case. Yeah, let, 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 me, asked, let me also quickly ask this. say that the government will remove uh, pastors from preaching on their pulpits. You know, it simply says registered trustees where there is mismanagement, gross misconduct, and fraudulent activities. Yeah. And they will not remove those trustees unilaterally or arbitrarily without going to court. So they will go to court, the All commission right. will go to court to get an order of the court for, for the placement of those trustees. I'm going to quickly interject. I, I, I want to know if you feel, it, isn't it too late to ask government not to implement these things when it has already received presidential assent? And um, what, do you think, oh. what do you think might play out if, um, from what you've pointed out, you know, there's a certain block of, um, of can, you know, that may be having issues. So if the other blocks are good to go, and that particular block still doesn't agree with it. Um, what do you think, or how do you think that will play out? And also, is it not too late? No, it's too late. It's been signed into law. As far as the government is concerned today, it's a law. It's a law. So it's late. What we can only do is to go to court and to challenge and contest that. Uh, but it's late. As it is today, today the yeah. Corporate Affairs Commission, the registrar, can actually implement those parts of the law. Uh, but of course, can would head to court to challenge it. But with, with regard to the question on the block that has issues, I, I have always advocated that can should sit together and speak with one voice. But do not forget, can is more of an association, uh, and so there's a freedom to to join can or not to join can. The, the citizens of Nigeria must begin to realize that some churches are not in can. And some churches are not even in PFN. And they exist as a nation in a nation. And those churches are lawless, being led by people that demand respect. Everybody must be under the law. Most, you can't tell me you're above the law. I am, I am totally against leaders, church leaders, that pretend to be bigger than a nation or a government or above any law. So, but for CAN and the members that belong to CAN, it's easier to regulate, not by force, right. but subtle, subtly with advice, an advisory capacity to tell people what to do, what not to do, how better to administer and govern the organizations. The problem we have in okay. church is governance issues. And today, it's very key, it's very, it's very big, very big, very big. Reverend Yomika Sali, thank you so much for speaking with us. Looking forward to having another uh, conversation with you. Thank you, Sergei. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.